So these are just some of the basic tools that you can acquire from pretty much anywhere, Amazon, home improvement stores. You don't need the fancy multimeter right away, but this is mine for personal use. I'm a technician by day. This is just going to show an example of forward voltage. And that's what this symbol is, is a diode. And that's what that LED is. It only allows power one way. And we'll get to that in a second about the positive and negative end. This is some bare 18 gauge copper wire. This is RGBW 22 all wheel gauge, all wire gauge, <laughs> stranded wire that I got off Amazon. And it's a ribbon, the strippers, the cutters, some solder with rosin core. And then this is just a basic Weller 25 watt soldering iron. And then that's just a tip cleaner. My tip's garbage right now. But it'll get cleaned and replaced eventually. This is obviously an LED bulb. There's a positive and a negative end. The positive always the longer end. Negative is always the shorter end. Set my meter to measure forward voltage and we will put the test leads on. Positive, positive, negative, negative. It won't work if they're reversed so keep that in mind when wiring LEDs that it's always positive, negative, positive, negative and you'll see the LED is lit up. We're measuring forward voltage which don't really need to worry about right now at the exact moment. So move this out of the way and then we can proceed. This is going to be my demo panel. I broke it and we're going to explain that in a second. Um, so you'll get a bag of LED bulbs in your kit. Panels are pre-drilled. The red LEDs will fit pretty snug and easy to push down. Yellow LEDs kind of just fall into place or sit a little snug, but it's the white LEDs that you need to drill out. Otherwise you will crack this panel trying to shove them in. So don't do what I did. To drill it, I used a 1364 inch drill bit. Just bore that opening up <clears throat> so that way you can get the white bulbs to sit pretty nice. And then you can use amazing goop to hold them in afterwards because there is a prep before you put these in the taillight assemblies. So I'm going to take out some LED bulbs and get ready. We're going to lay them out. We're going to do two groups of 10 and 5 in each row per group. In each kit you'll get this sheet to reference what resistors to use in your line of LEDs, which is pretty nice. The top one will be non-regulated, so if you're not using a dimming module or any regulation and it's going to go above 13 volts, use that one. If you will be using a dimming module, where it's all going to see 12 volts, you can follow the lower section for a resistor reference. Otherwise in the link we can put, there's a site for a LED array wizard and that'll be able to show how to set up a schematic which is also in another tutorial that's a little more in depth. So anyways, we'll get started. So obviously with these, just take caution. Just, you don't need to force them in, but get them snug so they seat nice. And then just remember, LEDs always need to have the pattern of positive, negative, positive, negative. 
otherwise it won't allow power to flow through and then you'll just have section that won't light up and then you'll be wondering what the hell is going on. And then what I like to do after I make a row of five, I'll take the first positive lead and the last negative lead and push them down and out of the way. I don't cut them just yet. Take your wire cutters, cut a little bit above, and then fold the, the other piece over towards the other LED. And then you now the positive and negative right there are touched. And then continue down. And then we're just bridging them together right now, getting them ready to be soldered. Here's the last one. I usually leave these last two up. This is where I personally put resistors. It's right before the last bulb in the series, so I know where the ground is per group. Some people put it in the middle. Some people put it in the beginning, right away at the end. But I usually just put it right there in the middle. I'm not going to go into the sciences of it or the overview, but this is how I do it and it works. So it's always personal preference. Resist, as long as it's the right resistor size, you should be okay. And this really isn't too hard. It should be pretty simple. Once you get the hang of it, you'll do a couple sets. So what I like to do is place the resistor in between those two prongs and just wrap the ends around the standing prongs to make sure they're kind of snug so that way I know I have good contact. Don't have to worry about it losing contact before I go ahead and solder it together. And then after I wind them up, I usually push them down and have it so it's low to the panel so it's not poking up as you see and then we're going to go ahead and solder this first line you obviously don't want to hold the soldering iron on there for too long no need to get super hot just get it warm enough kind of tap the tip of the iron with the solder and then just let it beat onto the LED leads And then same with the resistors, we'll go ahead and we'll bead those onto the ends. So right now with this, you could take 12 volts. And if you can't get the fancy power supply like I have in the right top corner, you can get a 9 volt battery with a positive. Just attach your own two wires to it and just put the positive lead on the positive side of your group of LEDs and the negative on the negative side. Since there's a resistor in there, it'll just test to make sure that power is able to flow through and let the assembly, you obviously can't power an entire assembly of them because the LED, the little nine volt battery won't have enough push, but it can do a simple group of 10 LEDs just to make sure they light up. So this is, would be the top row of group one. Now I'm just referencing again how to determine how many LEDs to put in a line and what resistor to use per LEDs in a line. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to put the second line in, another set of five LEDs. Full set using a 270 ohm resistor, a kilo ohm. And right now these lines are wired technically in series, meaning if one of the bulbs do burn out in this line or something happens, the whole line will shut off. However, you'll see in a second that the power lines on the, the positive ends and the negative ends will be shared. 
but that'll allow the top row to still have power even if the bottom row were to fail. So then it's technically a series parallel. And then I'm going to fold these two positives together. And I usually typically point them up and then make sure to shake so you don't have any clippings left anywhere in there to touch or short anything out. And then I'm going to fold the negative ends down and touching each other. So that's one group that's considered a packet, a group. That's a group of LEDs. It's two by five. So there's 10 LEDs, two rows of five. Each row has its own resistors, but they both share a power and ground. For this basic setup, for our beginner setup of just standard break or park or turn signal, we can get later into modules. So I'm just putting the resistor on this line, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and solder it. Try to not make this as boring as it could be, but I feel like once you usually do one to two groups, of like such as these, you typically will get the hang of it. And then you'll be able to branch off like if you look at the lower right of the panel you could just run a straight line of four put a resistor at that right before the last bulb in the line and then just leave the two ends you don't have to make a box group you can do a lot of different things just follow the same concept as positive negative positive negative That's the first group. I'm going to speed up the video so I can make a second group. That way I can show how you tie two groups together to have them both come on together. With this setup, all groups can share a ground. So you can run a ground rail throughout the whole thing. It's just in a certain color or a certain section that's only supposed to have a break or turn or part function. Those can only share power. You can't share power to everything else on the board. Otherwise, everything will all let up together. The same thing as before, just showing you a little bit faster way to do it. Once you get better, you'll, you'll get a system down to where this won't be as tedious. And then this is where you're going to see the bare copper wire come into play after I get these resistors down. Go ahead and cut the ends off, no need to keep them super long. So now I have my positives pointing up and my negatives pointing down, two groups ready to be conjoined. This is where the bare copper wire comes in nice because it allows you to tie and tap at many different spots on a board when you have a lot of groups to connect together. And what you'll notice is I'll cut it long enough so that I can actually fold the end up and over the leads coming off so when I place it you'll see I fold it over bring it over here fold over again that just is what I do to ensure it stays tight and makes contact obviously keep adequate space so it doesn't touch anything else that it doesn't need to but towards the end there is a prepping you can put amazing goop over that or shoe goo over that and the resistors to not only hold the some of the bulbs in place but to add an insulation between the wires. So you can see there how it's tying the two positives and then the same concept for negative it's gonna ground both negative ends of the groups. And then I usually solder the whole rail just so it's sealed up and sturdy because it will solid you don't have to worry about vibrating around as much. So that's two groups tied. All can share ground. I'm going to explain something too. Now if the row underneath is also, let's say, a break, and this is the start of that group, you can put that LED in and either tap that line on just that positive lead right there 
or put a jumper wire to get it up there and then if it's on the ground side you can simply just bend the end and tie it right into that ground you don't have to have a million wires running around the board you can save space with these rails which is really nice and it saves space which is also helpful because you don't want to use too much space up you don't want too many wires you don't want to trace things if you ever have to go back and fix something so we're going to go ahead i'm going to turn my power supply on light them up so we can see them in action test make sure everything works so go ahead put the negative on the ground rail and then we're going to put the positive on and as you can see they light up Ta -da! <laughs> so now you can mimic a break by tapping it so that would just be brakes only and then if the bottom section underneath this is just explaining how you would make wire ends for the harness so you would take this split it in two the blue could go on the ground rail and be a ground to the pigtail harness to the car and then the white could just be the positive input for the red and if the groups underneath were yellow or white you could still all share the same ground you would just want to run a different color lead to those bottom groups to let you know what's functioning where that's pretty much it this panel however if you're gonna do a ghost module setup you're actually it's different because you're gonna see that there's a lot of wires coming off but that is a constant 12 volt and then the ghost sequencer will control each of those groups where all those wires come off those are considered channels and the ghost will actually control it all via ground side so if you look at the top I railed all positives together to control positive across each group of LEDs or lines and on the bottom for the group all the ground side got their own individual leads and this is what you would do for a ghost module or animated or even just a sequencer setup but the course of motion would be the opposite way they can all share ground but then you need a separate positive lead per channel so this is just basics they all share ground positive separate ghost sequencers they all share power grounds are separate so other than that it's not too difficult you start making a lot of sets you'll probably get the hang of it you learn a system then you realize it's not too hard and then this is why the ribbon cable is nice because it holds it all together so it looks cleaner when you do have to go ahead and run it out of the back of the tail assembly or tie it into a ghost module setup you don't have a bunch of loose wires you got to tape together they just stick together nicely so and I got that off Amazon And then now I'm just referencing, again, the differences. Shared 12, separate grounds. The other panel is shared grounds, separate 12s. Other than that, thank you for watching. Um, best regards.